All right, welcome everyone after the break. I hope you had lunch and you are hungry for more startups uh, to come here and join us on stage. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our mentors who are sitting right here in the front row. We've got here Alicia Chlibowicka, Relationship Manager uh, at European Investment Fund. Uh, we've got Sonja Sulzmeier, uh, Managing Partner at Navispace. Um, also, Angelo Burgarello, Partner and Business Director at AI Startup Incubator. And Audun Abelschnes from uh, Texters, the Managing Director. All right, so let's invite the first startup to join us on stage. Is Albert around? Come here, yeah. You'll get your pitching tools right here. Oh, you have your own tools. <laughs> okay, maybe let's give you. Ooh. Would you like a table for us? Mm? Yeah, can you, would you like a table for us? Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Maybe I don't get a table on startup events, so. You see, Thanks. you have it here. <laughs> All right, so your presentation is, in, your presentation is on stage, so. Oh, well, this thing can... is for. Yes. Yeah, yes. okay. So you can feel free to start your presentation now. Okay, cool. Uh, well, thank you very much for having me. My name is Albert. I'm coming from Croatia. I'm currently 24 and I'm running this business called CircuitMess. What CircuitMess does is that we're creating these educational toys that fix the way we teach kids about electronics. This is what one of these toys look like and we're currently a team of 25 very young, talented people, and we have managed to reach a milestone of $1.3 million. And this year, we'll generate even more revenue, which is $2.5 million of revenue that we're expecting for this year. The problem that we're solving, this display is a bit bad, but anyways, the problem that we're solving is that we feel that kids spend so much time in front of their screens, but despite that, they still don't like to learn about STEM technology. And this is basically creating a big problem because there is more and more vacant STEM jobs in the world. We're trying to fix this by basically democratizing STEM knowledge and education by taking it, taking it out of classrooms and putting it into these tiny boxes that we sell to parents as a subscription. This is how it works. So basically you subscribe and you get a box of these educational Lego-like components every single month and you need to build them, learn how to code, learn how to do electronics, and the whole point of it being a subscription is that you have a community of builders that build it with you and you get a new project every month that teaches you about a new thing. These are the products that we have built so far and launched through a subscription. We have quite a few of them and the whole point of it being a subscription is also that each one of these teaches you about a new thing. This one teaches you about computer vision and autonomous vehicles. This is like a walkie-talkie, like an offline WhatsApp that teaches you about encryption. The DJ mix table teaches you about music. This one about AI and etc. cetera. Um, these are the things that we have done so far. So more than 55,000 of these products uh, manufactured and fulfilled. Other than us only designing these products, we also manufacture them all in Croatia. So we have all the machinery and stuff, and this is basically how we have managed to really thrive in this environment where there are so many issues with supply chains, semiconductors, and basically everything in the world right now, to be honest. Um, this is how our revenue has been growing. 80% of our customers come from these countries, and we're building a new thing, which is going to be an addition to our business model. So we feel that we have kind of figured out hardware and have been building this business by selling these hardware subscriptions. But now we want to do something that all of our VC friends like us would like us to do, but also that we think is good. We want to build some sweet, sweet recurring software revenue. So we're building this new app that's going to teach kids about electronics in a fun way, but the main 
main motivation behind it is that we want to reach kids that are younger. And we have figured out that if we want to do that, we need to do something that's going to be like a mobile game. So we have taken, like created this concept. It's going to be an addition to our existing business model. And it's going to be integrated in a way that you get rewarded for buying physical products by having a free trial of this app. And vice versa, if you buy the app, then you get discounts for physical products. The market is quite big since we're basically targeting all the kids in the world, but we're trying to focus on this thing here. So the EU and the US, because we have seen the most, like the best feedback from these two parts of the world so far. The market, I also view it as being full of dinosaurs because I think that none of these big companies that have been around for more than 100 years, this says 19, 1921, so Hasbro is officially 100 years old, they haven't really done much to really innovate in this space of educational toys. Basically, they have been selling the same plastic Barbie dolls for the past 100 years, and I was, I was a bit you know, surprised to actually learn that kids from, you know, they're, since they're, they're born to basically ages 14, they get a total of 400 toys. And they usually play with them for like a month and then they throw them away. We're trying to change this by basically creating these educational experiences that will provide some more meaningful learning experience. I haven't done this with my co-founder. He is a serial entrepreneur from Croatia, this guy. And I have a team of 25 people right now. It's separated in these five departments. Uh, this is where we see ourselves going in the future. Um, and we're currently fundraising, employing as well. So if you have any cash or if you need a job, please do hit me up. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks a lot. Now let's move on to the questions and any feedback. Uh, that you'd like to give to, to Albert here. Uh, Angelo, would you like to start? Okay, let's start. So the presentation was nice. Thank you so much. For Thank you. Uh, I want to start with a couple of questions to understand a little bit better. So um, you told us that the age of the kids that you are targeting, it's 7 to 11. It's for all the products or just for the... So right now, this hasn't been really highlighted in my presentation, but right now we actually have two different subscription lines. One is for kids 11 plus, which includes electronics and coding, and the other one is for kids 9 to 11, which includes just electronics. <coughs> and this year in December, we're going to launch our third subscription line, which is going to be for kids 7 to 9. So we're trying to segment this market because you know, there, is, there really isn't a one-size-fits-all solution when it comes to kids, you know. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's why I'm asking. And um, actually, this is a very nice space to work in, you know, because there is a clear trend of growth in, uh, in, uh, in the education for kids. And well, uh, if I may interrupt, I, I'm not sure if I completely agree. To be honest, this whole educational space has been quite rough. Most of the startups that have been founded, you know, alongside us in 2017 have actually went bankrupt. I think the main reason was because they weren't really focusing on having a subscription business model, but on single purchases. We also started as a single purchase one-off product startup. We have been trying to put it into schools, into distributors, but up until we figured out that we want to sell this as a subscription, we couldn't really grow that fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah. No, 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 yeah. that's fine. I agree with you on that. But there is also another part that uh, I think is crucial. You know? Because uh, parents are not looking just for something that is going to improve the skills. Yeah? They want to have a possibility to have governance over the improvement of the kids. Yeah? So my other question, and this will be a suggestion if it's not implemented yet, would be to have a software that is actually taking care of the development of the kids. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Because whatever kind of product of this type that it's gonna be done to be put in the market in a, in a strong way and to give really a solution to a problem that you wanna solve. Yeah? This is the education of the kids and to drive them into STEM is to give control to the parents. They need to understand the evolution of the skills that the children have. Because if you're targeting this age, seven to, to 11, probably even younger, yeah? The younger they are, the more guidance they need, right? So, That's right. A feature with a control panel 
where there is actually an interaction between the parents and the kids will be a huge advantage. And it's yeah, something that discriminates you from competitors. Yeah? Because exactly as you say, it, it's not only the software that is missing, component that is missing, but it was also the control that was missing. You had a dumb piece of hardware that is working one way, not giving feedback to the parents. That would be my if, if you were opinion. to make this software yourself, would you sell it to end consumers or to governments? Probably none of them. Yeah. Who would you sell it to? Oh, first of all, uh, there is a market research that needs to be done. Yeah. I haven't done it in this specific no, no, I'm just, I cannot yeah, say. Asking it all but I will, what, what I would do, like, uh, I don't know if you have distributors. You said you don't have not distributors yet. Yeah, well, I mean, like, we work with distributors. But to be honest, like, the only thing that actually is allowing us to grow off is B2C. Because we tried selling this to schools, we tried selling this to, to, to like, distributors, but it has been really hard. Because, like, for an example, distributors, they, like, it's, I would say it's easy to sell to them, but they require very high margins. You know, they take 50% of your product's retail price. Schools, on the other hand, don't require margins as big as that, but they are much harder to sell to. And in this mm -hmm. part of Europe, they also don't have as much money as we thought they are going to have, especially when it comes to public schools. We have had some, you know, good experience with private schools in the U.S. But I'm just, you know, I'm just, you know, thinking this is a very good idea about this software, you know, that uh, is going to allow parents to monitor the development of their kids. Yeah. This is actually something that we, we have been going in this trend because we have started by doing these cool devices, but then we're so slowly switching into a business that we want to basically develop like a learning experience from a very young age mm -hmm. to, you know, basically until kids go to college. Yeah. Okay. And also it has been much harder to develop something for kids that are younger compared to older kids because explaining AI to a seven-year-old is much, much harder than explaining it to a seven, to an 11 year old. Okay, um, well, actually uh, we are running out Thanks. of time here, but if you have any, uh, any other comments or something that you'd like to add? Quickly? Quick one, yes. uh, super cool presentation, well done. Thank well you. Done. Where can I buy one? You can go to circuitmess.com. Okay, I will. You can, use, uh, you can use a discount code techstars20 for a 20% discount. Also, 10% of an affiliate code goes to him. Excellent. So, <laughs> but my serious question, have you tried teaming up with uh, you know, the big guys, the dinosaurs, and selling their stuff to enhance your brand uh, Well, that's, that's even further? Question. We were talking with Lego Ventures, but they told us that we're too small for them. So, you know, tough luck. Uh, but um, no, like we haven't really been trying to team up with them. What we did do was last year, we launched a licensed product with Warner Brothers. We're actually the only company from our Balkan part of Europe that has gotten a, a global licensing deal with Warner and we have launched a licensing pro licensed product. We have seen that this really has uh, propelled us further, but I'm not sure, like I cannot just, you know, send an email to hello at Hasbro.com. So if anyone has any context there, I would be willing to discuss that, yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so we much, ran out yeah. of time, so big round of applause here for Albert. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Go ahead. Um, okay, so I would like to invite our next startup to join us on stage, Maur Karakuli from Schooler. Yes, yes. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Yeah, feel free to go. Okay. Hello, I'm Aor, I'm the founder and CEO of Schooler. May I see all this presentation? Yeah. Um, me and my team came together to develop the Schooler platform. Scholar is a platform for students who are seeking scholarship and for funding organizations who give the donors who gave the scholarship itself. Yeah. So you may ask what is the problem? According to our researchers, Funding organizations waste a lot of time with data organizations. They, they validate the docs and need more of tellers and secretaries to validate the docs who the scholar students send to them. Although they have a problem of main uh, organized data, they need to organize data themselves, and they have no technology or new technology to do that. From the student side, there are a couple of problems. Once they have to navigate between uh, scholarships, 
Second, they have to sub submit each scholarship separately, upload the, re the relevant document itself, and also remember to follow up each year to their scholarship, to their funding. They, they also uh, have a miss opportunity. They miss the many opportunities for scholarship. Students do not award the large uh, quantity and the large power of scholarship and grants, and they also don't know even uh, they have they don't have any awareness of the power of scholarships. So we are Scholar. We develop a, a, a SaaS platform for students and scholarship, Y system platform. By using AI and image uh, processing technology, we validate the docs, uh, give some uh, recommendation to the organizations, and make the process from the, uh, from the stage that the students seek for a scholarship until you get the final grant fast, fa uh, fast efficient, and better. As I said before, uh, we have two side solutions. Uh, one is the funding organization. They want to find their ultimate scholar, the ultimate student. They need some uh, technology, uh, automatic uh, scan, uh, OCR actually. They, they also want all-in-one uh, organized uh, data system. And they want a better communication between them and their student scholars. As I said before, our students have kind of problem to upload their documents. They need to do that every year. They need to submit. They need to follow up about their scholarship. There are so many scholarships in the world, and we want one platform that will gather them up. So our market. Uh, as you said, in Israel, where I come from, there, there is $300 million dollars uh, this is actually the money that rolls in regards to all to scholarship and grants. As you see in Europe, uh, 16.4 billion dollars in the U.S., about 140 billion dollars in grants. Our business model is pretty simple. We will do a free model for one or one and a half year, and then we will go to free trial model. Depends on our customers. So how are we different from our competitors? We're using OCR, we're using a one-on-one -on -one chat, we're using a CRM for the donors, uh, the organization uh, funding. And how, I mean, our unique value proposition will be one international. According to our researchers, there, is, there are no system that is international, appended uh, international to all, the to all the people in the world. Second, organization side. We know that the organization side don't have any platform for that. And third, the process. We make a solution for the whole process from the moment a student search for scholarship until he get the final grants. Our go-to-market strategy is pretty simple. We will develop an, in six months beta version, go into pilot with one or three uh, design partners, go into uh, uh, commercial, uh, commercial process into uh, September 2024, and then we will go into Europe. This is me and my team. I am our, the founder and CEO of Scholar. I hold a BSc in electrical engineering. I'm also the CTO of those three uh, developers, and we have also UI UX designer. Uh, so what do you want? want we, we, one, we want a pre-seed round. Actually, we want 150K for pre-seed. And two, design partners. We want design partners to help us gain this, this uh, journey, locally and globally as well. Uh, our achievement so far, we participate in the international uh, competi competition. Also, we graduate in Future HIT Accelerator in May 2021. We also participate in Israel and Emirates Business Summit. And now we're doing FI, some of, some of you maybe know them, Founder Institute Accelerator, to make our uh, startup grow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, no, 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 you still need the microphone. So now we are moving on to the mentoring session. And maybe, uh, Sonia, you would like to start? 
I have uh, one question. Um, I'm not completely sure if we have the need for such a solution in Germany. Yeah, so I'm completely aware of the of the system in Germany. So um, it's a question: In which geographical regions uh, of the world does your solution is your solution for which geographical region is your solution relevant? Well, actually, we know that we, we need that in Israel, my country, and we know that the we, uh, USA people need it. Um, we, we still don't know every country in Europe, like Germany, but we hope that, I mean, there is no international solution for that kind of problem. That, that's what I know from our researchers. I mean, ju <laughs> sorry for, for this wrap, just to expand. Every competitor have their geographical uh, location uh, destination. Means every every solution, every competitor uh, append to their university, to their country. But there is no kind of Airbnb platform for the world. Thank you. All right. Uh, do we have any other comments or questions? Okay, Alicia, go ahead. Hi. Hi. Okay. Um, well, I generally like things that are efficient and fast, so I, I think it's great that we're providing more solutions to make life easier, um, so that's great. And it seems like you're using technology that is, that is uh, the AI and the image processing tech is, is, is sort of validated. Uh, a question about how are you gonna protect all the confidential data of all the financial situations of the applicants, and because that's gonna be probably a thing that you need to tackle for all the, um, you know, the current data, the data hacking, uh, et cetera, problems that you can face? Yeah, good question. Actually, we're not dealing with financial problems. I mean, we're not trans transferring the grants between the students and the organization. We're just the tube to the data. Uh, about uh, some uh, justice uh, uh, issues like uh, personal docs and all that. So we just upload the terms of use to the students, you need to sign it uh, and all that. Moreover to that, uh, we'll not save the data on our uh, server, we just tube between the uh, student and the organizations. Okay, uh, we ran out of time, but thank you very much, Maur. And uh, we'd like to invite our next startup on stage. So I'll take that. Thank you. And next up, we've got Mikhail Mikhailov and uh, Iris Solution. So, <laughs> wow, you brought the whole crowd here. Perfect. All right. The clock is ready, and your presentation is here. So feel free to kick off right now. Hello. Uh, I'm Michael from Iris Solutions. I'm uh, one of the co-founders and business development officer of the company. It's a great pleasure to be here among you. Uh, Iris Solutions, we are EU licensed payment institution for account information and payment initiation services. Actually, we are open banking provider. Oh, oh. Sorry, sorry. Oh, oh, oh. Uh -huh. Sorry. So, we provide bank data and account-to-account -account payments to support financial institutions and innovative businesses. What is the challenge that we solve today? The, the financial institutions uh, need bank data in order to improve their uh, loan assessment process. Uh, the accounting software, their earpiece, the insurance companies, the OAT companies, they all need direct access to the bank data to, in order to provide uh, better UX for their customers and to improve their business processes. The expensive card-based uh, payments, they are a huge burden for the merchants now. With our one platform for all banks, we su provide a portal to all bank data and customer behavior. We support banks in the process of uh, loan applying in order to provide them the ability to get enhanced uh, knowledge about the customer behavior. We support the earpiece, we support the, the accounting softwares, providing better UX for the customer and easy approach to bank data. With the efficient payment methods and solutions that we have created based on account-to-account -account principles, we provide uh, ready-to-use solutions for banks, which is white-label solutions, and we sell directly to utility companies, e-commerce, and insurance companies. 
currently, we are in the process of development our data analyzing platform, which provides ready-to-use uh, KPIs or indicators for risk assessment, for income verifications, and it could be used for trigger for sales. Today, we serve a lot of companies in the different business verticals by providing uh, data, serving as a bridge between the real business economy and financial system. Oop. Something went wrong. Sorry, we'll, we'll, we'll try to fix that as, as soon as possible, and we'll yeah, give you some okay. ten, 10 extra minutes, uh, seconds. <laughs> so. Uh, our total addressable market is uh, up, up more, more than uh, 3 billion euro with a uh, broad variety of reach. Our top uh, service addressable market is something like 110 million euro. Facing the competition of uh, pan-European players, players and local players, we rely on our deep understanding in the financial industry and our agile approach. We have a very simple and clear business model with uh, go-to-market strategy we rely on uh, our direct approach in the bulgarian market with mixed approach on the nearby markets in romania and greece and partnership based approach on the other target market this is our team we are a team of friends and professionals who have worked in uh, multinational companies for many years. We share common principles and beliefs to bring the, the open banking life in Southeast Europe. Today we serve customers from four countries. Uh, we serve customers in different business verticals and we face the, the challenge uh, to be a trusted supplier to all those businesses. Join our journey and monetize the value of open banking with us. Thank you. All right, thank you. And now yeah. let's let's move on uh, to any advice from our mentors, any feedback or maybe a question. Uh, Who would like to start? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Alvin. Yeah. Now it's on. Sorry. It's Maybe it's unfair that my comment now comes to you. This is a little bit relevant to all the startups, but uh, I come from Techstars, and we're the world's biggest, uh, you know, early stage investor uh, and accelerator setup. And we take storytelling extremely serious. Uh, and sorry, I, I st storytelling—it's yeah. very important for for us and for me. And when I look at your slides and listen to you um, in a very friendly way, mm -hmm. you you expect me to read the slides versus you telling me what's on the slides, right? So I think uh, if, we're, if I were to look at your presentation next time, I really would like the slides just to back up what you are saying, not all the way around. It's actually a really important principle when you are presenting to investors. And that's, again, a little bit unfair that it came to you because it's actually relevant for, for maybe for all the presenters, presenters today. But really focus on, on clarity and simplicity on your slides and let the images show uh, and just enhance the powerful message that you as the CEO and founder of the company are presenting. That is critical and it will make your presentation just 10,000 times better and stronger in, in the future. It's a friendly comment. Uh, oh, thank you. Because I feel that the message is lost in just a lot of texts that I actually don't manage to get it at all. So you, you lose my interest very quickly in the presentation, unfortunately, and that's just unfair, because I think you have something really cool there, right? Thank you very much. Sure. Appreciate okay. it. Yeah. I want to add something to this point. Um, so it's, you created the same impression, and then at the end I was completely surprised that you already have so many customers. Yeah, so it's, uh, you have an exciting, you, you are a success story, but at the beginning, it was not. Uh, it was not. Uh, uh, I didn't get conveyed excited. like a, yeah. uh, like a success story. I really thought, how want to? How do you want to sell it to a bank? Yeah, who is really? It's tough to sell to uh, a bank. with the data. It's really. <laughs> it's really a tough job, and you did it. And this is really. This is really exciting. And then at the end, I thought, wow, this is. 
Great, uh, yeah. Actually, currently, so. the moment we are servicing four banks, and probably we will serve another two till the end of the year. Yeah, that's great. So Congratulations get that for up this. in the beginning, in the first 10 seconds, you know, slam that in my face. So first I'm impressed. Slide, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. Appreciate it. Um, okay, we still have a, a little bit of time if there's anything else um, that you'd like to add. Yeah, maybe Go if ahead. I can quickly. But there was one number that attracted my attention uh, that the serviceable, tenable market is one third of the uh, actual, uh, sorry, this, yeah, of the serviceable, addressable market. Uh, so it means that one third of the clients that are in the market, possible clients for you, is actually something that you have uh, in, in your plan to, to get as, as paying clients. What is the unique value proposition that, that you're going to use to get this big chunk of the market? Sorry, but I'm not sure I understand the question. What's uh, your value proposition? What is the value proposition yeah? you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, First, on the market, there is a lot of competition, but uh, the market is quite um, diversified, diversified, and there is quite a specifics on each market, market in Greece, a market in Bulgaria, and, and uh, Romania, for instance. Observing the other markets, target markets we are currently entering, uh, there is specifics in which we manage to obtain and give us uh, advantage for the, the competition. On the other hand, we have worked in the financial system uh, for more than 15 years. We know how the bankers uh, think. And working in the banking system, we, work, we were inside the banks, but we know how the, the customer of the banks thinks, what they need, what they see in the face of the banks. And we provide uh, what they need for the earpiece and to the accounting system because I have worked with accountants for 10 years, but I have worked in the bank systems and I know what they need. And it's the same in the lending business because uh, all the lending institutions, they need specific information, especially non-bank information, non-bank lending institution. We know how to provide this information that they need, easy, uh, easy to use and reachable, and how to provide uh, seamless UX for the customers. And this is the advantage. Okay, thank Did I manage thank you. To, to answer the question? Yes, plus okay. minus, yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, big round of thank applause you. here from thank Michael. Uh, yeah. Where's the it's here. Okay, let's move on to our next pitch, and it's email tree and Cassius. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Hello. so let's see. We can see, um, we will see your slides very soon, and that's when you have your seven minutes for your pitch. So good luck. Thank Feel you. Feel free to begin. Hello, so I'm Cassius, founder and CEO of Email Tree AI. Email Tree AI exists because of 15 years of experience in e commerce area, handling our internal customer service. Uh, back in 2017, we had three people uh, managing the customer services, emails, calls, and so on. I lost one of them, very dear, and then I said, well, we have to do something. Uh, and I started to think to email tree as a solution to automate all those processes, all those repetitive tasks that the human is doing when uh, email comes. So it's, uh, it's about uh, email. Sorry, getting the intents, getting the, the sentiment, classification, uh, getting the, what is the action to be done, what is the, what is the elements that are to be uh, used in order to execute some task. So today, what we do is this, we propose this open platform to deliver end-to-end -end automation and augment, augment the human behind their screens. First customers like uh, Web Help, uh, five years contract, long term, so they already reached uh, high uh, KPIs with, uh, using us, and we serve through them all these customers. Orange, our very first customer back in 2018, who started using us because they said, You built Email Tree to help yourselves, so uh, obviously it was, it's going to be good for us, so we start a co creation and a long term partnership. BW Media Soft, which is our 100% uh, uh, owned uh, subsidiary in the e-commerce area, software distribution, 
And just to have an idea, here we generate 1.3 million ARR with the equivalent of 1.3 FT, meaning that there is a lot of automation inside because everything that we observe that can be automated, we do it by using email tree, all those flows, together with RPA. I will talk a little bit later. So today we take off after three years of uh, learning which are the use cases, taking a look uh, and understanding what the, the customer wants uh, in their uh, customer services and support teams. So we feed robots at the end. Um, it's intelligent end-to-end -end customer service automation. Like I said, understanding everything that is in, inside that uh, request, then we do it through a dispatcher. We take the decision to redirect to a human or through API or through robots. Or through a, or to Salesforce uh, uh, service now, once the the, the, the response or once the uh, the action is finished, we generate the reply using machine learning, based on the uh, so built uh, uh, due to the knowledge base that was built in the past, and we so sent out. While I'm speaking, uh, our customers like Orange have a part of their emails already solved. Some others proposed with different confidence levels. So the human gets in the loop, refine and sends out. So it, it, it depends on the use cases. So it's, it's our pl platform, it's very modular. They can use whatever the uh, module they want and they, they can consume it. Like we see, some of them are using only API, like a car manufacturer, other inside Zendesk, other inside Outlook, uh, French Ministry of Defense, uh, it's a combination, uh, Outlook uh, as well at, at, uh, with uh, Orange. So it's a permanent interaction between the AI and the human. We want to keep the human in the loop to make sure that the agent, which is our persona, is the one we target and we have to, is the one we want to convince. So they, they get more and more comfortable. And once they say, when they say, I am, uh, I am um, comfortable with the level of automation the machine proposes me and the accuracy, I move to the next step and they ask us to activate new, new modules. It's very intuitive. This is the inbox. Uh, so when you, are, uh, when you open your inbox, you already see tasks that are already uh, prepared. You can uh, mouse over and you can send out others which are more uh, difficult, like negative sentiment and so on. You can to jump on it and to, to refine, to work on it. Strategic partnerships are very important for us. We can execute the tasks through the RPA players. Uh, then web help and orange, like I said, co-creation, maybe later some exit options. It's about data protection and, uh, and, sec and uh, security by design, GDPR compliant, of course, ISO 27001 in progress. We can go everywhere where our customers have their cloud, private or on-prem or whatever, so we stay very close to their data. We are in production since 2018, and the highest uh, uh, time saved, 80% uh, was reached with, with our, one of our telco partners, which I customer, I cannot show it here. So these are our customers. The go to market, uh, we, started, uh, we started recently to push very light versions in Outlook, uh, extension for Chrome Zendesk, because we wanted to build this community, the ones who are going to feed our uh, leads later. So when you start observing how many users are using the light versions, then they can move to uh, our uh, sales team, and from there uh, they need more complex uh, automations and uh, uh, like uh, AI plus CRM, API, RPA to execute those tasks. So we target SMV and uh, enterprises. We have pl uh, plans. We are uh, we invoice them based on uh, on the volumes. POC are already uh, always integrated in, in long-term uh, contracts. Uh, we want to, uh, to convince them that the, the, the platform is efficient and like this, the, the contract is, uh, is continued automatically. We reach, uh, we target one, one, 102 million euro for 2026 as, a, as a, um, a winnable market share. Today we generate, we will generate by the end of the year 900K. Uh, invoiced, totally invoiced, and hopefully 26, uh, uh, 60 million. 
We are in the funding, late seed funding, 2.3 is already committed. Uh, today we start officially crowdfunding, 1.5, and for the rest it's, uh, uh, we would like to welcome a VC. The team, um, Huawei team, uh, I mean uh, Gardner, uh, Christina, uh, we are very close with the UiPath uh, uh, um, ecosystem, like I said. Uh, myself and Xavier, my co-founder, Sarah Entrepreneurs. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, we have exactly three minutes to give some feedback uh, to Cassius. So who'd like to start? Yep. So yeah, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Hey Cassius. Hey. Angelo here from a Startup Incubator. Thank you. So first feedback, uh, a little bit in line with what the, our colleague from uh, Techstar said before. In my opinion, the, the slides are a little bit too busy, yeah, okay. because it distracts the attention of the people outside or out of what you're saying, driving the attention on too many things on the slides. Okay. So my suggestion is try to put it more simple, direct, and simplify it. Yeah. And uh, at the stage where you are, because you are already growing, yeah, yes. uh, and uh, I know we have been discussing also in the past, and uh, there is, a, there is a, a growth trend that you are following. But what was missing in the slide is that for startup at your stage, you need to have a clear plan for further growth. And I didn't see what actions are going to enable this growth uh, okay. in the next stage. Because you, wanna, you have a clear, clearly tough goal yeah, to multiply by 100. Yes. Uh, times the, the, the revenue, the annual revenue that you have by 2026. How you will achieve that? What's, what's going to happen now is that we, um, in order to scale, we are going to increase our partners' networks. So there's a transform with the money we are raising, there's a transformation that we need to do in the platform to make it partner friendly so that they can take it uh, and bring it to the customers. Of course, there will be two, three contracts that we take them by the hand and we do it together. But coming from there, uh, they will be, let's say, alone uh, in order to, to push email tree to their own customers. It's the only way we, how we can uh, scale today. With our team, 35 people, we cannot do it. Uh, we can do two, three contracts per month, that's all. So we definitely need to, to, uh, to go with, uh, through partners. And we started to do this. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, we still have a little bit of time. I'm not sure if there are any other questions. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Uh, very cool. Uh, I'm, still, I'm a proponent of make life easier, as I mentioned before. So very cool. Um, storytelling, though, is not easy. Don't worry. So uh, I think everyone, even who are people who are not pitching, are, has to work on slides. So I just say I think it's like a, a growing... It's a growing skill that we all learn over time, so I, I just encourage everyone um, to, to always get better at that. So I think that's just it's a good feedback. A question about competition. How do, you, how do you see your competition? Because I don't see, um, I'm sure that probably there's other, other similar yes. kind of solutions. Following our um, uh, analysis, our competitor the, who is working on this end-to-end -end automation like we do is Isera in US. And now there are uh, new startups coming into this area. Uh, let's say some of them start with the chats and then they move to email and then they start working with, with RPA. Others, they move from RPA and a add uh, AI. So at some point in time, somewhere in two, three years, there will be probably uh, platforms like ours uh, solving a problem from A to Z. Uh, but basically, uh, in this area, we, uh, we take a look very close to, to ICERA. Okay, we ran out of time, but thank you very much. One thank more you. time, big round of applause for Cassius. Okay. Yeah. And now I think we'll relax a bit, and I think we all could use some cold beer, <laughs> because the sun is really... Um, in our faces, right? I hope you guys have some sunglasses. If you do, take them out and just um, be, be the bosses. So if I, I'd like to uh, invite on stage Balas. So come here and tell us about one, two beer. Thank you. Last time when I visited a festival, I was waiting for half an hour to get a beer. I was pretty upset. 
That's why we created an automatized beer tapping machine, which makes the beer much quicker and easier. Hi, I am Balaj. I am the co-founder of One Two Beer. Let's see what the problem exactly is. The venues has slow services and uh, they loss of time the waiting and uh, the beer will be lost due to the manual tapping. It's about 5% uh, losses and the caterer companies, breweries uh, lost also revenue due to the inefficient processes. With our solution we give uh, them a rapid quick service with zero loss of beer, it means that we save all of the beer amount uh, that we tapped and we give more revenue and they can also optimize the staff resources. The world market is pretty huge at the dispensing uh, technologies in general and the beer dispenser market global is also about uh, 322 million euro and our target is uh, to have uh, 5 million euro revenue in the, five, in the next five years. Our business model based on three pillars. We rent also our machines in a day uh, for big events, festivals. There is also a subscription model for monthly and year subscription. And we are selling also technological license with our patent solution. Let's see how the product works. Ah, okay. Just, uh, we need to wait a little. So as you see, we started at first the first uh, prototype last year. It was a black box and uh, we showed them to some customers, some uh, beer drinkers and they give some feedback. And uh, according to this feedback, we developed our new product and it has a faster tapping modular units and it's compact machine. And our vision is a festival version with a fully automatized system with a recap dispenser and automatic payment. For sure, we have competition in the market. We are outstanding with our, our modularity with the machine because we can put some modular options and we are with the fastest modular tapping, the best in the world. And let's see how it works because the machine is compact as a cafe machine. You can put in every venues, you can transport it easily and it's really fast. It's four times faster than a person and it's modular with our customized tailored design. It means we can put some different options to the basic machine. It can be a cup dispenser, a conveyor, and an automatic payment. And with this modularity, we can fulfill much more customer needs as the competitors. We have already a lot of breweries cooperating with us and paying and satisfied customers like the Ottakringer Brewery in Vienna, the Dreher Brewery is in Budapest, and we have ongoing uh, discussions with the uh, Stiegel, Braunion, and the Heineken in Austria, and uh, we are targeting to have the market lead position in Austria next uh, year, and we have also some uh, collaborating partners at the catering industry. They are really enjoying to work with us, uh, with our solution, and we served also our machine in some conferences, also like here, so you can also try how it works. 
Uh, we started last year with some customer tests uh, with the black box machine, and uh, this year we were ready with the first uh, new prototype, and this new prototype were also tested out in some events, uh, festivals, and uh, we tapped uh, more than 5,000 liter already with uh, our machine and attended more than 50 events. And uh, we started the pilot phase in Austria, Hungary, Czech Republic or already this year. And we had also a serious uh, production partner who produced us already 10 units. And this year we are going to have the patent and next year we are expanding to Germany. And our plan is to have next year 500,000 euro revenue to generate. In our team, we have all competence uh, to run a business and uh, to continue the product development. And we have also a mentor team. Uh, they have a lot of experience in the brewing industry, in the beverage industry, for example, at uh, Heineken, Red Bull, and also in the event management. And now we are looking for the first uh, investment round for 300,000 euro. It will be used for the market extension and uh, for further research and developments. And we are uh, scaling our production and it will be used in 18 months uh, timeline. So I hope uh, we can see you in the next festival. And one, two, and your beer is ready. Cheers. Cool, thank you. <laughs> Actually, I hope that you know that you can try the beer upstairs on the first floor. Uh, I hope you're, you're aware of that. Um, so, okay, let's jump uh, quickly to the, um, to the Q&A. So, Sonia, yeah, feel free. Thank you so much for your presentation, Balash. Um, again, the question, who are your competitors and uh, the Catering industry is, is, a, is, a, is a super tough one. So they are very often um, open to testing something, but to really spending money on a solution is, an, is another topic. So it, it would be really interesting to learn your competitors and also how you want to, how you, let's say, uh, get them to really spend money on your solution. So firstly, the competition, there is the Beerjet company in Austria. They have a pretty huge machine and we asked uh, our customers what they think about this machine. Firstly, it's uh, too much uh, cost uh, for one day is not affordable, the price, and they need to use at least for three days because of the installation time. And regarding this feedback, we developed our machine much compacter, so we can install the machine in one minute. So it's uh, our competitive advantage uh, to be compared with Beerjet. And to the second question, uh, as you mentioned, the catering industry is really critical about the budget because they are thinking day by day. That's why we are focusing on firstly on breweries because they have a bigger budget and they are uh, targeting and planning uh, uh, one year advanced and they are the owner of the assets of the manual taps and they are providing also these machines to the caterer companies because if a caterer or event has a contract with a beer, they get also the equipment for free by the brewery. So that's why our best customer and our target group is mainly the breweries. And they are really open to work with us and they want to write us with one year subscription for long term and with the maintenance service. And our plan is also go for this way with predictive maintenance because we would like to use as long as possible our machines that it make more revenue. So our goal is the reliable machine for affordable price and not for cheap. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, we have 30 more seconds. Any other, any other comments? Um, yep, go ahead, Odin. Quick comment. Um, I liked your slides. <laughs> there were less less text, uh, so a clearer story. So just to, for a learning perspective, it's easier to follow you and actually look at you as the CEO, not try to read all the slides. So so well done on the storytelling. Thank you. Yeah, yeah go ahead. S 
so as well, good on the storytelling. So now I'm thirsty. Have you ever thought about taking it and making like, a, if I want a Coke, I go to a dispenser and if, or to have a, like a machine that dispenses me beer quickly, like a, like a coffee to go? Yes, uh, but it's more a B2C direction. At first, we would like to stabilize our business in the B2B, and if we have enough revenue, we are starting the next revenue streams, especially focusing on big events, because we can have a revenue plus in the summer events and optimize our resources, because the, these events happening from weekend to weekend, so we can have a time to set uh, 100 machines to one event, make a really huge huge revenue for this couple of days and after move the machines to the next event. So that's the next goal and for a later version we can build also a smaller machine for uh, uh, self-service and it can be used also as a cafe machine as you mentioned and a home version is also in a discussion. <laughs> All right, thank you. We ran out of time. Uh, so thanks you very much and big round of applause for Balas. And go have some beer, guys, as well. <laughs> uh, give there, okay? Um, so thank you very much. This session has come to an end. Really sorry about the sun. I hope you guys are fine. Uh, if you have sunglasses, really uh, take them with you next time uh, when, you, when you join us here. Um, so I would like to um, also have an applause for our judges right here. Maybe you can stand up so that everyone can see you. We've got Alicia Hlibowicka, uh, Sonia Sulzmeier, Angela Burgarello, and Audun Abelsners. So thank you very much, and uh, we will see you in about two, three minutes. We just need to set up a few things, and we'll have a fintech session this time, th fintech-themed session. So thanks a lot, and see you soon.